Antonis here. Now, mm. were you surprised by the reactions of the people around the smokers? Oh, well, it, it was as though Lady Godiva had come in for a sandwich. <laughs> they were all nudging, pointing, and, and some people were offended by it. But quite interesting, one of, one of our smokers in the film, she's a hardened smoker, and she enjoyed it, and she said she'd take them up in addition to smoking, so she wouldn't cut down. She'd <laughs> double a dose of nicotine. Oh, really? She can now smoke in places like that as opposed to outside. Because you, you tried it as well, didn't you? I tried it. We didn't show that on the film. 28 yeah. years I've given up, and I thought I would do it for the sake of this programme. And I was really scared to do it, because the first time I put nicotine back mm. in my body. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I got a hit. And uh, for two hours afterwards, I was debating with myself, should I have yeah. another hit? Sure. Uh, so yeah. as well as a cutting down exercise, it could get ex-smokers back on it. Yeah, how do you feel about these, Alison? Because, I mean, it seems very strange to see in the film now, you know, people tabbing away in a restaurant. Well, I hate smoking. I mean, uh, I gave up smoking years ago. But anything that helps people give up is great. Yeah. But I'm not 100% convinced about this. No. I'm really mm. not. Are they a big thing in LA then, Josh? Do you know? I see commercials for them now and then. You're getting some, seeing some celebrity endorsements of products like this. Um, I'd be curious to know if there's any secondhand repercussions the way there are for, for yeah. actual. Yeah, that's one of the objections now. Nobody knows at the moment. Right. It's not regulated. That's yeah. interesting. Because yeah. as a singer, you know, I, I can choose whether to smoke or not, and I don't smoke. But it, it also can affect me when I'm around people who are smoking at a party or something like that. Yeah. And I wouldn't mind it so much if it was something that, that you know, didn't have the smoke aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Well, Tony, it's the 30th National No Smoking yeah. Day uh, today. So what is the state of smoking as we know? Well, great, this band's been in for a while. Great strides have been taken, Matt, to be honest. In 1948, when records began, 82% of adults smoked. In 1974, it was 51. And now it's 20%. So they have got it down to a rump. But I guess one of the most disturbing figures is that 140,000 kids aged between 11 and 15 are smoking regularly, which wow. is shocking. Yeah. And what are they going to do then in the future? What are the proposals? And well, one of, the, one of the ways of stopping kids starting to smoke is this. They're going to have, uh, if the camera can pick it up, they're going to have no branding on cigarette packets as well as all the revol revolting pictures wow. as well. And the other legislation we're expecting Grim. in the Queen's speech, I think very sensibly, <laughs> is that they're going to, we believe, make it illegal to smoke in a car with kids. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely should be. Mm. And speak it, thank you, Tony. Okay. But we're going on to smoke of a different Well, type, yes, uh, we? talking of white smoke appearing, yep. uh, the, the new Pope has been chosen, and we believe it will be Pope Francis I uh, from Buenos Aires. <laughs> good stuff, Charles, good stuff. Okay, uh, Josh and Alison, yeah. here we go, right? Got, yeah. got a bit of advice. Oh, yeah. You didn't yeah. want to make some advert cash. Apparently, the place <laughs> to go is Japan. Yeah. Because many A listers have gone there to make adverts, hoping that everybody in the Western world would never see them. Okay. But that's until the one show found them. Uh -oh. So, yeah. uh -oh. <laughs> can you spot who sold what? Basically, it's a little game. Uh, this is Show Me the Yen. Okay, it's quick, quick. It's, it's very simple. Okay. okay, basically, all you have to do is you have to guess which celebrity has um, endorsed which product. So, we're going to start with uh, Ringo Starr, the drumming, okay. sen the drumming sensation yes. from the Beatles. Did he sell an apple drink? Did he sell breath freshener? Or did he sell <laughs> light bulbs? <laughs> what are you thinking? Oh, gosh. I'm, I'm a musician, and I love apple juice more than probably anything so on this earth. So I'm going to hope it's apple juice. Okay. okay. Awesome. I was going to go for that as well. You can go for that if you want. No, I'm going to go for light bulbs. Go You're on. going for light bulbs? It's so ridiculous. Yeah. Well, let's find out. Okay. Show me the yen. All right. The Ringo Sutta. The Ringo Star. No! The Ringo Sutta. You've, you've got it. You've got it. Now, this, this is unbelievable. You won't believe this, <laughs> yeah. right? Because apparently, in, in Japanese, uh, Ringo means apple and Suta means grated. So his name actually means grated apple. Grated apple. Yeah. <laughs> like it's fortunate. That's why he's in it. It's perfect. Yeah. Okay, the next one is triple Oscar winner, yes. Daniel Day-Lewis. Now, who would have thought he needed the cash? But did he sell socks or mineral water? Or was it bandages, do you think? Alison. Oh, God. Um, Daniel, I have no idea. Uh, mineral water. Oh. Okay, mineral water. I loved him in my left foot, so I'm going to say socks. Oh, nice. <laughs> okay. I don't know. I... Who knows? Show me the end. It's pure. <laughs> Much like 
his acting style. I'm so yeah. into it. Oh, yeah, good. Very good. Wow, that was great. Well done. One all. One all. That's it. One Excellent. Okay. Now that Ace Dog's head back to Birmingham, where Miranda <laughs> is getting ready to sing with her brand new girl band. Uh, Lucy, how are things going over there? Now, we've got some more advice because Josh Groban in the studio. What can you tell Miranda about her performance tonight? Give us some tips. I would say breathe. I think the energy is going to get you through it. Say a couple of Hail Marys to the new Pope. And, uh, and whiskey, if you have it uh, next to you. I would say alcohol is always a good thing. <laughs> Yeah, that's good advice. That's good advice, especially the breathing and the Hail Marys. Okay. Is she in the walls, is I think so. But she looks some... genuinely yeah. scared, yes. doesn't she? Yeah. Anyway, please keep your donations rolling in if you can afford it. Miranda will certainly appreciate it. Yes. Um, now, Alison, let's talk about Syndicate because it's back, isn't it? Next week. It's week's back, town, 19th of March. 51. So, this is the second series. In the first, uh, there was a group of people who were in a Syndicate based in a convenience store last time. But this time, you're a group of hospital workers in Bradford, aren't you? Yep, yep. And we're sort of low-key hospital workers. So I'm an auxiliary nurse, and there's a cleaner, a porter. You know, people that actually work very hard, but don't earn huge amounts of money. No. Hmm. Well, before we talk more, let's have a little look at Rose um, in her hospital guest. OK. Here we go. Morning, Rose. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> good. A lovely character. We've seen the first episode, which sets everybody up incredibly well. Yeah. I mean, Kay is a brilliant writer. Uh, yeah. She's very, very clever. And the thing about Kay is she knows human beings. She knows how mm. people feel. She, every character is so clearly defined. Um, and it was great fun to do. We had a great group of actors. Yeah. And because we're all in this syndicate, we felt so solid as a group of actors together. Did you? Did and you? Yeah, we really did. Because, because each episode has a different sort of person's perspective on winning the, the 13 yeah. million. That's right. And it takes place in the same time scale. So each episode, you see it from a different character's point of view. So, like, mine is um, episode three, and, you know, so, so, it, so it varies. Mm. And it's... Um, it's, it's great. I mean, the only thing is, you know, I, I'm sitting there uh, um, acting <laughs> a woman who's got 13 and a half million pounds. And then I come home without it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> to hold me again. So it's, but, uh, but it's fascinating, it, and it yeah. really does make you think. And very complicated yeah. characters yeah. they are as well, and so many. But it's very intriguing. There are some very dark ones in there who I hope will get flicked out of the syndicate by the Well, who knows? Stick around, wait and see. But I tell you what, Alison, the series is bound to ring a bell with these ladies, isn't it? Yeah, four shop workers who swap the check out for a massive check. Here we go. <laughs> that's brilliant, though, isn't it? Because the four of them can afford to do all the same nice things every day. Perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Is but it right, though, that you didn't actually want to talk to anybody that had won the lottery before you did this role? No, I didn't, no, because... Um, I knew that Kay, I mean, had done lots of research. Hmm. And Kay's writing is so good that I just wanted to approach it from Rose's point of view. Yeah. You know, so that it was a bigger shock, you know, it's a shock to Rose. And if you've kind of done all the research, somehow I thought, no, I'll, I'll just approach it fresh. And yeah. Yeah. And everybody does that thing where you go, what would you do if you won the lottery? Well, of course, we were all talking about it as actors all the time. You know, mm. would you do this? Would you buy that? What would you buy? You know, would people hate you? Would you lose your friends? Because mm. mm. it's a very, very difficult thing suddenly yeah. to go from someone who is poor or can't even afford to have a simple little holiday yeah. to having 13 million and being able to do anything. Yeah, it's yeah. terrifying. You'd hire Justin Bieber to sing at your house. Well, that's <laughs> it, yeah. 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 <laughs> I, I guess, Josh, you kind of feel like you have won the lottery, do you now, when you think back to growing up and, and your lifestyle now? I've been very fortunate. You yeah. know, I mean, any time that you have, a, you have an opportunity like the one that, that I was given, you, um, you feel very lucky. You try to keep your head down and just do the best work possible to live up to the things that have been given to you Yeah. Um, and try to give back in as many ways as you can. You know, it's, I think that's, that's the best gift is that you have a chance then, a, you know, a podium to then uh, reach out to others. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the best gifts you had, well, in my opinion, because I love Ali McBeal, is having a role on that as well. Yeah, that was one of the first things that was, uh, that was in my life. I was, it was just after that other story when I was younger, and I had sung at a, an event where uh, the cast was there, and um, I was going to be kind of the wedding singer in this episode where Robert Downey Jr. was going to sing with uh, Mary uh, Calista Flockhart. And uh, for reasons that well, we didn't know, uh, 
Robert Downey Jr. couldn't show up to set that day, so they put, wound up putting me in the whole episode. And uh, it was my, kind of my first taste of, of getting out there, and people still stop me for that episode. It's I great. remember you in that very episode. Yeah, yeah. 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 How, how does that compare, though, when you look at your work there and you look at, like, your new album that's out now? Do you think, you know, I prefer that, or I'm <laughs> just singing, or I want to do more acting? Uh, I prefer being that skinny, uh, right. but uh, I, uh, I think ultimately music is everything to me, and I, I feel... I, yeah. It's the music that allows me to travel around the world. It's the music that is why I get to sit on this very furry uh, sofa, furry sofa next to a national treasure. Uh, and yeah. so I, um, you know, I think that that's that's what I'm going to stick with. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, back to Alison. The Syndicate starts Tuesday, uh, the 19th of March. Well, it's next Tuesday at nine o'clock on BBC One. Yes. Still to come, we have got Daredevil Jonathan Goodwin. He's getting ready. Look, there he, like, he's filling a kettle. The water is still <laughs> cold. Now, this is going to be a spectacular escape. Whatever you do, do not miss it. <laughs> yes, he's actually feeling okay. He's going he's really back for a second for one now. <laughs> um, but before that, here's a second Miranda of the day with an animal escape artist who's not so welcome. <laughs>